Welcome to night number 45 of History Bedtime Stories in bed in our pajamas. Tonight let's talk about the Coleman Young Municipal Airport, which everyone still calls by its original name, Detroit's City Airport. It was the region's primary airport for over 20 years and has still remained active even though it's in terrible neglect. In 1922, the start for a location inside the city of Detroit to build an airport um, turns up this 263 acre plot of land near Corners Creek on the east side of Detroit. And it had a couple of things going for it. It was um, largely flat, wouldn't need a ton of grading. It was in a unoccupied area where they could get 263 continuous acres. And being that it was next to a cemetery, there was a thought that residents would be, you know, too dead to complain about the noise. So the airport is built over the next five years with the official opening on October 14th, 1927, when the first plane lands and the ribbon is cut at the terminal. After the terminal's dedication, it becomes um, really a heavily used airport. In 1929, they build the first hangar and the two runways are extended. However, in 1947, following the end of World War II, the Willow Run Factory and Airport in Ypsilanti, Michigan, starts taking away a lot of aviation traffic from Detroit City Airport. The city transitions to um, kind of planning for a busier, more metropolitan airport, and eventually uh, Willow Run gives way to Wayne County Metropolitan Airport, which we still know and have today. When new planes started being built larger and larger, aviation uh, safety required that there be a um, sort of safety zone extension to runways so that if pilots were unable to stop, there was this safe skid zone. Because of the cemetery that bordered the um, old city airport, they didn't have a spot to build. And for a time, there was a thought that they would disinter all those bodies, move the cemetery and extend the airport, but surviving relatives of those interred in the cemetery complained and the plan was pretty quickly dropped. The very last commercial flight to come into City Airport was in 2000 when those regulations went into effect and the airport wasn't able to extend the runways to meet them. However, that doesn't mean business and flights to City Airport have stopped. Today, private planes, uh, are incredibly popular. In fact, in 2017, there was a 40% increase in private jet traffic in and out of City Airport. It was largely attributed to sports events, concerts, and the building of Little Caesars Arena, bringing people into Detroit to see these um, shows. In 2018, the City of Detroit got a proposal from a local aviation firm to um, take over the city airport for $4 million. They wanted to build brand new hangars, they wanted to extend the runways, and really get it back active into the glory days again. It boasts 3,000 parking spots, a 53,000 square foot passenger terminal with room for restaurants, retail, concierge, car rental, baggage claim, the whole works. However, the city of Detroit turned down that $4 million offer and still is not offering any kind of long-term lease to um, aviation companies and private jets. City Airport remains a really untapped resource in the city's back pocket. And in 2018, uh, I'm sorry, in 2008, it was included in the bankruptcy proceedings and was brought up in cart in 2013. It is still owned by the city and hopefully one day will be active again. If you've been enjoying History Bedtime Stories, tag two friends down in the link below and give us a like and a share and we'll enter you to win a whole bunch of City of Detroit stickers next week. Stay safe. Wash your hands.